Like a lot of politicians recently, Jim Banks, a congressman from Indiana, made a trip last week to the U.S.-Mexico border. We better, we better roll. Banks leads the Republican Study Committee, one of the most conservative groups in Congress. It brought eight lawmakers down to the border for a stacked day of photo ops and tours. All good? Behind these walls is a 90,000 square foot soft side tent facility. We weren't allowed to go in, so we don't know what it looks like in there. Uh, but these Republicans are down here to get a sense of what is happening. Republicans see border policy as President Biden's biggest weakness, and they're making it their biggest messaging tactic. Biden's poll numbers on immigration are 19 points lower than his overall approval rating which is why Republicans have been coming down here stirring the pot. They like to point out that Biden and Vice President Harris haven't visited the southern border, but groups of Democrats have. The message has to be uh, that we are strongly committed to undoing the wrong. We didn't come here to talk about problems and heighten the controversy and the anger. We came here to talk about problems and heighten the solutions. Democrats have a very different tone on this issue, which seems to be why, despite all these fact-finding trips, so far there's been absolutely zero consensus on comprehensive immigration reform. I just want to first say uh, thank you, everybody, for making the time today. So this is our second stop of the day. This is the border. This is the U.S.-Mexico border here. These Republican members are meeting with local law enforcement, sheriffs who are dealing with migration across the border every day. I've got a very small office. I've got six full-time deputies. We cover 1,300 square miles. Last year alone, we had 70 some odd pursuits and we ended up with two wrecks, ended up killing three. The unique thing about Uvalde County that the two largest intersections or the two largest highways intersect in Uvalde. So that's Highway 90 and Highway 83. And those are the, your main couriers that lead into Mexico and then out. So as the drugs, human smugglings are coming out, monies are coming in. This is really eye-opening for all of us. This isn't Republican. We're Republicans. This isn't Republican, Democrat. It's not Trump, Biden. It's a humanitarian crisis. We came here to find out what's causing it. How do we fix it? Underneath what can feel like political theater, there is a real emergency. Over 170,000 people were taken into custody after trying to cross the border in March, a 15-year record. There's always an uptick this time of year when conditions are ideal to cross. But on one hand, the factors driving migrants, a pandemic recession, climate change, and violence have only gotten worse. And on the other hand, Biden promised to end deportations, giving some people hope. Okay, so where are we headed next? Uh, we're heading to the Maverick County Airport. Uh, the members in our delegation are going to hop in helicopters and fly over the border uh, to have an aerial view to see uh, the activities on the ground. We want to understand why, why are we seeing an immediate spike? The Border Patrol agents, what they were, and the, the station chief back at the Del Rio station, he made it very clear that Title 42 works. It was working. Uh, the changes that were made in February by this administration related to unaccompanied minors is a major motivation for the cartels to send uh, more unaccompanied minors across the border. So you're talking about Title 42, which is this CDC rule, which has basically given the CDC director the ability to say we're stopping all immigration because of a pandemic. So it's a it's a public health reason. But when the Trump administration used that and also stopped migrant kids, what do you do with kids who are unaccompanied minors? You send them back? Is that really who we are? Is that is that a good policy that they had going, the Trump administration, to turn those kids away and say, because it's a pandemic, you guys have to go back? Yeah, as, as inhumane as you can describe that as being, it was a deterrent from these kids from coming over the border to begin with. And it was so the deterrent to the outweighs, outweighs the maybe inhumane treatment that they got? The had? humanitarian crisis that we're seeing build up at the border today and the number of, of kids who are affected and families who are affected 
yes, the deterrent is worth it. I mean, we're seeing firsthand the, the result of reversing those policies. Title 42 is one of the only policy prescriptions we heard from banks during the trip. On the next stop of the tour, a flyover of the border. Hello. Hello. Thanks for Welcome. having us. The group got a 30,000-foot view of the issue, but it's unclear how that experience could translate into solutions. How is what happened today not just a photo op? How are you digging deeper into the issues uh, than just showing up at the border? Of course it's not a photo op. We're, we're here to listen and learn. That's what, we, that's what we should be doing as members of Congress. Get out of the Beltway, get out of Washington, D.C., and come to a place where something is obviously happening that needs to be addressed and fixed. I read your, your policy memo that you guys put out a few weeks ago, and it says that in, in the memo, you call this crisis intentional. You think Joe Biden really wants this to be a crisis right now? Why would that be good for him politically? How does that make sense? I have no idea. I have no earthly idea why he would refuse to call it a crisis. If you were in the but detention the intentional facility. Part, though. Why would he want to intentionally create a problem like this? I, I don't know. But his actions to undo the policies of the, of the Trump administration, that were working. Uh, the flatline statistics from just last year compared to the rising number of illegals who are crossing the border today. Biden says that he was rolling back a lot of those executive orders that President Trump took because he saw them as inhumane. Did Trump help create some of this issue? Well, first of all, President Trump is not the president anymore. And Correct. President but Biden's policies are the ago. ones that are fueling the crisis at hand. And what we have to recognize, what we heard from many of the local law enforcement agents today, uh, or, or agents at the local, state, and federal level, if, is that if there are no consequences for coming across the border illegally, then more will come across the border. Banks peeled off from the rest of the group at the end of the day and went down to the Rio Grande without locals and without a clear objective. Were you hoping to see people? No, not necessarily, but to get a better perspective of the, the terrain. Does this change your mind about how desperate people might be to try to come to the U.S. and try to come across a river like this? It doesn't change my mind at all. I understand why anyone would come, want to come to America. Uh, for better opportunities. We, we are the best, best and greatest country in the history of the world. And to come here, to come to this side of the river for opportunities to achieve the American dream and prosperity, uh, I recognize as a dream of anyone that lives in many other places in the world or in most of the rest of the world. But when we have, we have policies that incentivize those to come, uh, come here, to come here illegally, um, that's what's fueling the humanitarian crisis that we're seeing unfold right before our eyes. And that's, uh, that's what we're here today to learn more about.